Hello guys, welcome back to another Home of Nail Art tutorial. Today we're going to be going over all things infills, so let's get straight into it. All of my prep today is going to be using an e-file. I have gone into depth on how to use manual prep tools and this is all on the application tutorial that you can find on Home of Nail Art website. So the first step in the infill process is removing any gel polish and a lot of the bulk of the builder as well. So I'm using a barrel bit to do this and I'm going to remove most of the apex because the nail needs to be restructured. Where the nail has grown in around sort of four, four and a half weeks, that apex has moved further down and the nail's no longer balanced. So I'm removing a lot of the apex but still keeping most of the builder on the nail. We've spoken about balance before in previous videos, so when I'm talking about balance, I mean the structure of the nail. It needs to be thinnest at the cuticle, thickest at the apex, and thin again at the free edge. So after around three to four weeks of growth, the nail's no longer balanced, the heavier end is towards the free edge, that's gonna be putting extra pressure on the nails that will cause breakages and potentially discomfort for the client as well, which is why we debulk the apex so that we can rebalance the nail to make sure that the stretch is effective and comfortable for the client. All of this can also be done with a manual file, I just find it a little bit quicker and easier to use an e-file. Please, please only do this if you are qualified and trained to do so, because it can be dangerous or harmful if you aren't trained in effectively using an e-file. This can all be done with a manual file, and as I said before, you can see this process on the previous application video. Another reason that we debulk before we go in with any cuticle tools is so that the tool can sit flush against the nail plate. We don't want to be coming in at an angle which can potentially damage the client's nail and hurt them. So I'm using a cuticle bit from the centre of the nail all the way down the left hand side and this will lift the cuticle away from the nail plate and then once I've done all the fingers to the left hand side I can start from the centre and go down the right hand side as well. This process is essentially the same as using a cuticle pusher, so I'm just lifting away that cuticle to create a little bit more space on the nail plate and also so we can get in there to remove any non-living tissue that's riding on the nail plate as well. Now that the cuticles are lifted, I'm just going in with a cuticle barrel bit which is similar to our other barrel bit but a finer grit and that will exfoliate any of the surrounding skin. It's really good for getting down the side walls where it's quite hard to reach and then also the actual nail plate itself, so removing any non-living tissue from that cuticle area. Same process as before, I'm doing the centre down the left hand side, flipping the e-file in reverse and then going from the centre to the right hand side. It's now time to go in with our nippers, so I'm just removing any non-living tissue. Again, we can differentiate between living and non-living because non-living is normally lighter in colour and quite clearly dry. So you don't need to nip on every single nail and you need to be careful not to nip away at the epinicheum because that's in place to protect our clients from infection. And then I'm just going in with an e-file just to remove a little bit of length as well for the client. We've removed the length so I'm now going in with a Hona 240 grit file to reshape the nail into an almond shape. So I'm just moving from the left hand side first towards the centre and then the right hand towards the centre of the nail at the free edge and I'm just going to continue this process until I've got the desired shape. We use a 240 grit file just because it is a softer grit and that means you're not going to be at risk of damaging the client's natural nail. So where the build is a little bit thinner at the free edge, we don't want to be using a rough grit because it might cause splits or damage. A 240 grit is perfectly suffice to file and reshape the nail. And I'm just going to repeat the same steps on all of the nails, so moving from the left hand side towards the centre of the free edge and then the right hand side towards the centre of the free edge.
You might notice as well when your client comes in for an infill that their nails look a little bit wider where they've grown out. This is where the nail might be naturally wider towards the middle and then narrower at the free edge, especially on something like an almond shape. So just make sure you go right up the side walls and debulk any product in that area as well. You'll notice as well that I'm going over the top of the nail as well and that's just to make sure the product is nice and thin at the free edge, so making sure that the bulk of the product is at the apex. Sometimes after filing you might notice a little hangnail, so I always make sure to get my nippers and remove this and this just reduces any temptation to nibble or pull. And then I'm going in with 100% pure acetone on a lint-free wipe just to dehydrate the nails before we go in with our sanding bands and file the new growth. As we've mentioned before, it's really important for the gel to adhere to a rough surface. So any new growth on the nail needs to be filed again. We recommend using a 150 grit file, which is a rougher grit, just to make sure that that area is fully etched and ready for application. I'm using very little to no pressure at all and just letting that file glide over the area of new growth. If you're using a manual file, it's the same principle. We just need to be using minimal pressure and letting the file do the work for us. Obviously, a manual file is gonna be a lot larger as well. Just need to be making sure that we're navigating the delicate areas of the skin very carefully and making sure we're not snagging or cutting any of the client's skin while we're doing this. I am also filing over the builder itself. I find that if my base or my existing builder is as perfect as possible, then my application on top of that with the infill is gonna be so, so much easier. So if you've got any lumps or bumps or shaping to do, do it in this stage and then your builder is gonna go on so much smoother and so much easier and you're not gonna to have to do any refining afterwards. So I'm happy with all of my prep and the structure that I have ready for my builder. So I'm now going in with a small amount of complete base on my brush, popping that sort of towards the center of the new growth, pushing it up towards the cuticle and then covering the whole nail plate, not forgetting to cap the free edge as well. So I'm just gonna repeat the same step on all of my nails and pop that into the lamp to cure for 60 seconds. All of the curing times in this video and all of our application videos are based on the Hona Cordless Cube Lamp. Yours may differ if you have a slightly different lamp. There are details on the homeofnailart.com website where you can find additional instructions if you're using a different branded lamp. We have spoken about the paper layer of builder before, which is a very thin layer of pure build that we apply to all of the nails and cure in the lamp for 60 seconds. And this helps with adhesion. We're gonna do exactly the same thing on an infill. So I'm applying a very thin layer of pure build to all of the nails. And then I'm gonna pop that in the lamp to cure for 60 seconds before we go in with our structure layer. I've cured our paper layer in the lamp for 60 seconds and now it's time to go in with the structure. So I'm adding a small bead of Pure Build on my brush, applying that kind of towards the center of that new growth and then I'm gonna push that towards the cuticle and then zigzag that down the nail. 
Because we already have product underneath, we don't need to have as much product on our brush during the structure layer. So I'm just gonna apply that product and then refine with a striper brush. Sometimes you might still need to tilt the hand upside down to draw the apex down and build that structure. Um, you'll notice during this video that I'm not doing it for every single nail because sometimes the nails balance fine. Sometimes you need to give it a little bit of help. Remember as well that when we're using Pure Build or any builders, it's a good idea to cure in between each fingernail. So I flash cure for 30 seconds in between each nail to stop the builder from moving around so that I can focus on the next nail and make sure I perfect that structure. You can see on this nail that I'm applying the bead as normal, pushing it up towards the cuticle and then floating it down to about halfway down the nail. And then for the remaining half, I'm just pulling that product down or brushing that product down. The reason I do this is just because it allows me to have a little bit more control over the volume of product that I have at the free edge. So it allows me to keep it a bit thinner and it's a little bit easier than floating down a lot of product. Then I can use my striper brush to manipulate the product and make sure it's placed exactly where I want it. Whether I need a larger or smaller bead or to float the product all the way down or just halfway down does depend on each nail. It kind of depends on the volume of builder that's on there from the previous fill or whether or not the nail needs a little bit more structure or a little bit more help. So I just take this one nail at a time and adapt as I need to. Because we've only flash cured in between each nail, once I've finished all the infilling, I'm going to pop the whole hand in to cure for a further 60 seconds. We're now moving on to my favourite part, which is top coating the nails. So I'm applying a good amount of our Super Shine top coat, not too thin and not too thick, capping the free edge, repeating this on all of the nails, and then I can pop that into the lamp to cure for 60 seconds. And this is the final look of our Pure Build Cotton Infill. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a comment if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.